They feel me, they feel me, they feel me, they feel me. And there I was seen. Now you feel me, you feel me, you feel me. And then I'll be what? Visible? I think this, this is the first retrospective because the way you've worked before is uh, usually through new productions that you present on their own. And so you, the exhibition of your work tends to be about one project that is also contained in a, in a very specific architecture. Actually, maybe it's, there is a reason that we could talk about, which is that the work itself doesn't ask for a retrospective of the artist. You know, the work itself, that's how I perceived, for instance, the show at Witte de Witt two years ago, mm -hmm. where we were, it was a Cinema Hollanda platform, a part of the Cinema Hollanda pavilion, but as a platform to speak about the things that I was bringing up in the pavilion as, a, you know, national issues that we needed to speak about at home, meaning in the territory of the Netherlands itself. That means it has a function, a particular function, as an exhibition, rather than looking at the artist as something to study, which you know, I think that is what the retrospective maybe means. I think it's really interesting that we got to know each other as, um, you know, working in a particular relation to each other, which was you were producing, hands-on producing, the beauty and the right to the ugly. And in that role, we got to know each other as I found, anyway, that the collaboration was very um, fruitful and very nourishing because the quality was in understanding the practice as an open practice and being able to both intellectually and practically react to that and help mm -hmm. to give that space. And the step to come from that relationship of producing a film to making an exhibition was kind of, I think it was interesting, making this also into kind of a productive effort. For me, the, the memory of that shoot is that I, as I was working in a producer, so curatorial because we began writing, from that position I was very surprised that I felt very much like I was organizing some sort of um, celebration or event, mm. that the protocols that we were using to work and address people were at once those of the production of a film and those of the organization of a some sort of event, like there was a lot of hospitality yeah, involved. Yeah. And I think this stayed with me. Uh, it made a strong impression in me, and I think it has informed the way in which we've, I've thought about the show. Here we had not the people coming together, but the works to come together. Mm -hmm. And then still you need to kind of make this understanding what these works mean in a larger, let's say, analysis of our world right now, our life with each other, and then to see how these things can then structurally fit together to tell that. In, it's like then, yeah, you, like spatial editing or something that I think this is a nice um, step from making that in a cinematic way and then making it in a spatial way here. I think one of the main challenges of thinking about the first retrospective is how, how do we um, bring the works conceptually but also physically together because they, they have very compartmented existences. I think one of the first readings that together we produce of a journey of your work uh, was, was a circular um, reading. Like we would imagine of a, the show as a, as a journey that would work in circle and in both directions. It's also why we're in the third floor because it's the one, only one that Has allows the, yeah. for for that circulation. Again, it's one of the privileges of the retrospective is that it allows you to draw lines between a series of works and uh, to show a m motion and an evolution from one point mm -hmm. to another. Dance, 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 dance. They showed me the CCTV at the front of the gang, you can see me. I wasn't even on the hat thing. My solicitor, oh, she got right in. The press, they got right in. Government got typing like, yeah. 
another effort is to think about what knowledge you cannot have possibly. You know, you cannot. You can actually not enter somebody else's uh, experience or knowledge is coming from their experience. So there is a zone of not knowing that we can, uh, there is no overcoming it. And I think this, I find this very rich to say, that's right, but then I can actually invite this because it's spoken by somebody else. It's mm -hmm. somebody mm -hmm. else that's going to bring this to us via their experiences and either they bring it speaking or they bring it singing or they, their body tells yeah, us. Yeah. And this, this is the kind of knowledges I'm interested to bring together with my own that is so limited. You have to somehow place your own within this thing because you cannot leave your own out. You cannot be making a piece and you know, try to disappear somehow. So, and this is a question in the way that I work because where am I? You know, where yeah. am I visible? Sometimes I'm actually physically visible on the screen. Sometimes that's a method to make myself visible. Sometimes it's a method to make it clear that others are saying something to me. But so these kind of things are ways to put myself there. And I feel still it's a kind of a, it's a tension to, to see where am I? You know, it, it's, it, it's super important. I need, to, I need to know that I have taken that place. I think when, when, we, when we thought about the title Tono Lengua Boca, um, it was a way for us to avoid the word voice. Um, and we, we wanted to convey this idea of voice uh, from that which would be the elements that configure it. So a voice would be made of a tone, a tongue, and a, and a mouth. And it was in juxtaposing those three words, you also, um, this gesture, of disassembly yeah, yeah. Uh, is very runs through the show also mm. because we, we, what we are doing also is disassemble what constitutes your language uh, for someone to see how it came together what is it made of other people other voices um, open elements that you can walk through I think things are very somehow disassembled for you to navigate. I think every piece has this a little bit in it no I mean not it's interesting to say disassembled or you say like it's a it's a conjunction of different mm -hmm. elements that actually as a viewer you're actively assembling and i hope that like when i show a piece like this that people by experiencing it are active in their assembling mm -hmm. of how the different elements are uh, presented to them so they are not they're not like whoops so that they come but they are a bit like that and then you it's i mean puzzle is maybe not immediately a nice word but it is a bit like that you have to puzzle until it clicks as a a new configuration of these things that actually do belong together but it's just that indeed like the tonal lengua boca they belong together but they are a part to be actively understood as as okay they together make something that is bigger than if you just say one thing mm -hmm. if you just say yeah voice for instance but I also, I mean, with the Tono Lengua Boca, for me, what is really lovely about that title is its rhythm, you know, yeah, it's like that. Exactly. It's that what I looked for, like something that has rhythm. It, it then made sense to have it a direction, no? like from the tone to the language mouth to, well, sorry, from the language tongue to the mouth. So it's yeah. also like a, a direction. Yeah. Um, and I, th I, yeah, I think it also, for us, underlined something that has been a bit overlooked in your work, which is the sonic. Uh, and musical uh, dimension. I think we insist in that quite a lot. Hmm. Maybe it's just about sharing. Sharing a space and trying to work out who's taking what from whom. <laughs> 